Hello there, YouTubers! Today I visited the dump and there I picked up something that is using HX Pro. Well, what could that be? Of course, a cassette deck. Here is, of course, the cover for the cassette compartment. And over here in the Massey Workshop on the Massey Workbench, we have the Sherwood Model DS5015C cassette deck. So an auto-reverse cassette deck from the early 90s, and before we start with the presentation, you can already hear that nasty tone. This is called a test tone, and, uh, well, usually I'm repairing cassette decks, I'm trying them out, and uh, usually they can then retire. <laughs> I know, I have way too much stuff in here. Anyway, uh, this one, uh, this one couldn't because I was in the mood to play. So I went ahead, made up an adapter cord so that I could hook it up to the banana output jacks of this frequency generator. And then I hooked it up to the oscilloscope, and then I had some fun. <laughs> now, uh, you can hear our tone, and you can see it on the display. Tone is coming through the headphones. And as you can see, as I turn up the input level, we are in record pause mode. Amplitude changes. This is the balance control. Ooh, losing its... Uh, losing the trigger thing there. Anyway, you can see the record control is a little scratchy. And that's the electronics being overdriven. As you can see, they just go and cut off. Things start sounding nasty. Anyway, uh, using that setup, of course, I can also change the frequency up here. You can also uh, make it a square wave. Anyway, using this setup, I did some testing on this poor thing using this uh, old 1980s BASF Chromium Dioxide Super 2 cassette. And, uh, well, I tested the frequency response, which, uh, of course, this is, uh, this is no proper test equipment, so I uh, can't get any precise readings off of that, but uh, frequency response goes very roughly from 30 Hz, which really isn't that good, in my opinion all the way up to around about 22 uh, kilohertz. If you have the MPX filter activated, that cuts off the uh, input signal at around about 20 kilohertz. And uh, I also uh, tried out how far you can go how, uh, with, with a level, you know. And the uh, result of that was we can go all the way up to plus two decibels before we were getting some uh, distortion. And then I did something very, very mean, probably the meanest thing you can do to a cassette, recorded a square wave, and uh, I just uh, stopped this. We can actually take a look at the result. And there it is on the oscilloscope, and as you can see, that's looking rather nasty. That's, uh, that's not really your square wave, and uh, that is the reason why the data set drives for computers from the 1980s had some electronics in between, some special electronics that would translate the mess coming from the tape back into a square wave that the computer was able to process. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get on. Let me bring this thing into uh, a, a bit of a brighter spot so that we can take a look. And here we are back again, traded the lack of light for a rather shitty looking background. Here we have the inside and I was surprised. I thought this, uh, well, sure would not very good quality, at least from what I've seen so far, but I was actually surprised. This thing is right up with uh, the middle of the line Sony or Pioneer or uh, whatever, you know, Kenwood cassette decks of the early 90s. So uh, it was a bit of a surprise. So you can see not much going on here, as typical for early 90s cassette decks, everything integrated into uh, integrated circuits. The mechanism, uh, well, some metal, but not too much, but two motors. 
So you can see we have uh, one for the cap stands. Of course, this has two being an auto reverse cassette deck. The flywheels, as typical for the 90s, are made out of plastic with some sort of a metal insert so that they still have at least some kind of an effect. Of course, in the early 2000s, they left those inserts away and things got really cheap. This is a secondary motor, which uh, I guess drives all the mechanical functions. And fast forward and rewind. Transformer is rather small, but uh, judging by the flimsy wires down there, it, uh, it doesn't have to carry a very high current, so uh, I guess it's, uh, it's appropriately sized. Voltage regulators right here, once again, heat sinks uh, are uh, a joke. The uh, record play switch is not electronic, it is this uh, little relay down there, right next to the connections to the heads, and uh, well, that's basically it for the inside, so let's go ahead and take a look at the features and functions. And here we have the front of the unit with a view from the tripod for uh, added quality. Anyway, let me turn this thing on for you. There we go. And uh, we can go ahead and take a look at the features and functions as we always do. Up there we have an eject button. What a sensation. There is a power switch. We do have a little timer switch for hooking it up to an external timer unit. HX Pro. Interestingly, it does not advertise the auto-reverse capabilities. Never seen that before. Usually it always said auto-reverse in super huge letters on the cassette door. Interestingly, this is actually a pretty high quality housing as well. The front is almost entirely made out of metal. Even this part, the cassette door, is made out of metal, which is very, very uncommon. Usually, even if the front is made out of metal, the cassette doors are all plastic. Moving on, we have, of course, the function buttons down there, which give you all your standard cassette functions, including a record pause, and, of course, two directions, as this is an auto-reverse cassette deck. We do have uh, right there for, you can't really see that, AMS, uh, auto automatic music search. This thing does have that. Unfortunately, access by uh, pressing one of the uh, either rewind or fast forward during playback mode. So uh, if you really want to rewind or fast forward when you're playing back a cassette, you have to uh, press stop first. That is a setup I don't really like. For record, we have a balance control and a level control right there. These knobs are metal too which is also quite good for the early 90s. Over here we have the headphone output along with a level regulator and we also have a fine bias. And those knobs are plastic, by the way. Now up here we have the counter and uh, of course the display itself, level meter, all sorts of uh, different uh, indicators on there. I just uh, insert a cassette which uh, Okay, here we go, and uh, so you can see we are getting uh, arrows and uh, little, yeah, arrows, and if you're in pause, it's blinking, and uh, so on, so forth. It does have an automatic tape selector, as you can see up there. I had to do a bit of an adjustment there because... Uh, in uh, some cases it would detect chrome cassettes as metal cassettes, had to do some bending on the switches. The auto-reverse mode is being shown as well. Just the standard. Now, we do have some controls over here. And uh, Dolby BNC noise reduction, we have, uh, as I already said, the reverse mode. I'm not sure what peak hold does, so let's just find out. And guess what? Peak hold does exactly what the name says. It holds the peak levels, and as you can see, I play back a section of the cassette, and the peak levels are still being shown in the display. Kind of interesting. Anyway, 
We do have an MPX filter and Dolby BNC noise reduction and these are looking like uh, regular push buttons but very cheap these are switches usual on off switches very cheap I was kind of disappointed about that anyway down there we have the uh, controls for the counter we can either have a uh, well let me zoom out so we can uh, see that working we can even either either excuse me we can either have a uh, we can either have a regular non-linear counter like this, which is just counting, and in reverse mode it is counting backwards, and uh, or we can switch it to real time, which uh, well this is the reset button. Uh, if I can just there we go, as you can see it asks for the tape size. So let's just tell it that we do have a C90 cassette inside here. It's blinking a bit to calculate it, and there we go. And unfortunately, it's not one of these advanced real-time counters that uh, also works during rewind and fast-forward. If we just go ahead and uh, go... Uh, oh dear. As you can see, it's happily flashing as we fast-forward. It is blinking, which uh, means that you cannot see your real time. If you go back into stop mode, it has calculated, it, it keeps calculating, so you do get your real time, but you just can't see it during rewind or fast forward, which is uh, not the best uh, kind of uh, design. Let's just see. Okay, that's once again your uh, reset. We do have a memory function, lights up a red M, and uh, we also have an intro scan function over there. And uh, well, that's basically it for the features and functions of this cassette deck. So let's just go ahead and take a quick look at the back. Here we have the back side of the unit. We have, of course, the inputs and outputs over there. There is once again our model number up there. And this is uh, DigiLink which is uh, Sharwood's version of a system remote control. Some warnings. An AC outlet, which is something you re really don't see and you really don't expect to find on, uh, on a cassette deck like this. And then we have the AC input and as you can see we are getting in, uh, a plug for that. So we can actually take off the power cord, which is a really nice design. This cassette deck did need some, uh, well, not really repairs, it's more like service. Aside from bending around that one switch in order to get the automatic tape selector to work correctly, I also had to clean the mechanism, because the previous owners had a major accident inside it here. They played a cassette that uh, was actually losing all its tape coating, so... I had all those bits and pieces of uh, metal coating in the mechanism and I actually had to blow it out with a compressor before I could even start with the, with the actual cleaning. And all that, uh, all that uh, tape coating had uh, baked onto the pinch rollers, so those were extremely dirty. And that caused the cassette deck to do something rather nasty. It would chew up the cassettes that you wanted to play. It wouldn't eat them. Uh, the tape was staying in the cartridge, but it was uh, it was getting all messed up. And uh, when that happens, usually it's due to uh, something being wrong with the pinch roller. So I knew that I had to take a closer look at them. And uh, well, cleaning them up actually did fix the problem. Cleaned the heads, cleaned the pinch rollers, cleaned the capstans. Pinch rollers are still not perfectly clean, but I just can't get them 100% uh, clean. Uh, and I don't want to use any, uh, any of those uh, super nasty cleaning liquids because I don't want to damage the rubber. This is a look down into the cassette compartment and as you can see the pinch rollers are still kind of shiny, which is something you really don't want. But as I already said, I can't get them to uh, be any better without damaging them. So, uh, well, it's okay, but definitely not perfect. Uh, the other thing I have to say, 
the alignment of the head is very, very good on this cassette deck. Usually on the auto reverse cassette decks, uh, the alignment of those heads aren't very good, so you're not getting the full treble response. But on this one, that is not the case. It, uh, it really is very good. And that concludes this video. And yes, I know this has been another video in which I've just been talking and talking and talking and we have not actually heard this cassette deck playing a song. I do have two reasons for that that I can offer you. Reason number one, as always, copyright issues. Reason number two, this video is getting way too long already. So uh, anyway, we may go ahead and have this uh, cassette deck playing a license-free song at some point in the future. But until then, I just want to sign off, say thanks for watching, and see you again soon.